Hey guys, we just got Icebreaker as a part of the Vespers Host Dungeon. It is the exotic for that, and I actually got it from my contest clear. And that was a really exciting time, but I actually want to talk about Icebreaker in this video. Mostly, I've made a really cool build using Icebreaker. I don't think it's all that strong, but it is a ton of fun. So we're going to go ahead and check that out and talk about Icebreaker a little bit as well. But yeah, here's how the contest dungeon went first. And yeah! Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Get me out of this shitty dungeon. Yes. So yeah, we were pretty excited to be done, and now it's the next day, I'm trying out Icebreaker, and I have cooked up an absolutely fantastic build using it, I think you guys are really gonna like it. And this actually makes use of Stasis Hunter, not only for Shatter Skating, but as an actual build as well. First of all, let's talk about the Icebreaker perks so you can understand why this build is going to work. So you'll see right away Icebreaker gets ammo whenever you get kills using other weapons or any ability. We've also learned that the catalyst for Icebreaker is going to make it refund ammo sometimes whenever you shoot a frozen target or a slowed target, and that is going to add to this build even more. Basically you get at max 10 ammo, and there is no reloading the weapon, you just have a 10 shot magazine, which is pretty cool. However, because it's such a limited number of ammo total, it is pretty much stuck to roam content rather than something like a DPS phase, where you want to go into it with a big bunch of ammo at the start. But that's good and all, ammo is not really a big deal in the current meta. What were you making use of is actually the second perk on the sniper, and that is the explosions. Basically, any kill with the gun will spawn an explosion, however, if that kill is a headshot, it will be an ignition instead. However, you can also just shoot a frozen target and it will spawn an ignition as well, and that does not have to be a kill. However, what it doesn't say is that you can also shoot stasis crystals with Icebreaker, and it will make an ignition there as well. And that is what we're doing with the build. So on any class just running stasis, you can use these stasis wall grenades, obviously. However, decided to actually run stasis as a subclass instead of just using titans on prismatic. And the main reason for that is going to be Whisper of Shards. If you guys don't know, this is a stasis fragment, and what it does is it makes it so that whenever you shatter a crystal, you'll actually get an increased regen rate on your grenade. And if we mix this with the Frosties on Hunter, then we're able to get a grenade back extremely quickly. And then you can blend that in with some gauntlet mods and some cloak mods, and you can get your grenade back within like 5 seconds in regular activities. Now that's how we're going to be getting a ton of stasis crystals and having them on demand. But from there, what you'll want to do is toss stasis crystals into crowds and then blow them up with Icebreaker. You'll shoot one of the crystals with Icebreaker, which will cause an ignition and blow up a bunch of the other crystals. If you shoot one on the edges, then you'll actually have some crystals left over so you can do a second ignition. But if you shoot into the middle of the stasis wall, then it will blow up all of them for instant damage if it's a rather large crowd. But you can also spread them out, which lets you get a little bit more value out of Whisper of Shards, and also obviously lets you spawn more ignitions, which is really nice. One thing I noticed about doing this is that the ignitions don't really do a ton of damage from Icebreaker. I think they're just base ignitions and they're not really all that powerful. But this actually is kind of a good thing because it means that the ignitions aren't actually what's getting the kill. It tends to be the ability, which means that you get ammo back for Icebreaker whenever you do this. So ideally what you'll do, you'll throw down your crystal wall, you'll shoot it with Icebreaker, it'll ignite, prime all the enemies, and then the rest of the crystals shatter and it kills all the enemies, granting you ammo back to Icebreaker. And just to add to this a little bit more, it seems that the catalyst for Icebreaker is going to be giving it back ammo whenever you shoot a slowed or frozen target, so this is just going to make it even better at getting ammo back. At least assuming this counts crystals as frozen targets as well, which the ignitions obviously are, so... As long as they are, you should be getting even more ammo back every time you shoot crystals. But regardless, even without that, you still can maintain the ammo really well. And obviously, if you can't, you still have your melee attacks, as well as other weapons that you can use to generate ammo very quickly. Now let's go ahead and look at the rest of the subclass, because Whisper of Shards, Frosties, and Stasis Crystals are not actually an entire build. And I have made an entire build around this to make it just overall a good Stasis Hunter build. So first things first, we're going to be using the Aspects Shatter Dive, as well as... Grim Harvest, and the reason for this combination is that Shatter Dive, I like the movement so that I can Shatter Skate around. Obviously, if you don't Shatter Skate at all, you could probably just use something like Touch of Winter to get extra crystals in your grenade. And then the reason for Grim Harvest is because it grants you Frost Armor whenever you pick up these shards now, which is actually a really great way to have survivability. 
and because most of the time you're getting kills with the stasis abilities and not actually the weapon itself, you're spawning these shards on top of generating ammo for Icebreaker. Then for the fragments, and we actually get to use five of them because we're using Grim Harvest, I went with Whisper of Torment first, it's just extra grenade ability, basically for free just for taking damage, you do that all the time in Destiny. Next up we have Whisper of Rhyme, which basically lets you have more frost armor stacks, and I think it increases the duration too, which is super nice, basically it just makes frost armor even better. Next up we use Whisper of Fissures, this is so that the stasis crystals do more damage and have more splash. This is a super important one to make sure that the crystals are more likely to get the kills than the weapon. And then we have Whisper of Shards, which we already know about, granting us the extra grenade regen. And lastly, as always, I typically have a flexible slot, and this is no different. I decided to go with Whisper of Chains just to get even more frost armor going. However, this is very much so an optional slot, and you could go with something like Whisper of Impetus for your other weapons. You could use Whisper of Refractions to be able to dodge more. This is a flexible slot, and you can kind of just put whatever fragment you like the most in it, but I decided to go with Whisper of Chains. Then for all the stuff back at the top, we're obviously using Glacier Grenade to be able to spawn crystals. Although if you are using Touch of Winter, you can remember that Dusk Fields actually spawn a little crystal inside of the Dusk Field, but I don't think that would work as well because you're not really going to be able to get kills with the crystals, it's just going to freeze everything and the Ignition might get the kill or the Shatter might get the kill, but I think it's much less likely that you get a ability kill using a Dusk Field with Touch of Winter. Oh, and for the dodge, you can kind of go with whichever one you like, but I kind of lean towards Gambler's Dodge because I do like to use my melee to get back my grenade using the Gauntlet mods. And also, Withering Blades are just really good now. They got buffed a while back, I think maybe going into Final Shape or the update before, but they hit a lot of targets now, they do decent damage, and even if they don't get a kill, they still slow the targets, which is very nice. And actually, on the topic of Withering Blades, let's talk about some of the other exotics you could use with this if you don't want to use Frosties. The Mask of Filthy is really great if you kind of want to distance yourself a little bit from the stasis crystals and have something else going on for you. Obviously you'll lose a little bit of grenade regen, but your melees will be really, really powerful. It'll probably create more frozen targets for your icebreaker as well, and I could definitely see that being a great choice. Lucky Pants is also kind of a stasis classic. People generally in GMs and stuff have used Lucky Pants on stasis before. It kind of ends up just being a good pairing especially with like Whisper of Impetus and things. And you could basically just have like a hybrid build where you use like the Icebreaker and Crystals for Ag Clear, and then you could use the Lucky Pants Hand Cannon for damage. And then you could have an Egred Sword with that and Shatter Skate around while you're doing it. It's a pretty cool setup as well. You could also go with Star Eater's Scales now. Silent and Squall has actually become kind of a decent super in damage, and it could definitely help with the damage of the super. This isn't really one I would recommend, but it would definitely add a little bit of value at least. The spammy grenade kills with Ashes to Assets mixed with the fact that you're just getting a lot of damage ticks with the uh, Icebreaker stuff could actually get you supers pretty quickly, and so, you know, Star Eaters kind of adds some value to that if you wanted to do that. Stasis Hunter doesn't really have a ton of super specialized exotics for it other than the new Mask of Fealty, which is super good. So that kind of leaves a slot for Aeon Swift as well, which you could just use to make heavy ammo for your team, which is always nice. Basically, the exotic slot is probably one of the lesser important parts of this build, as long as you have the rest of it going, so you can kind of go with whatever you like, but I think that Frosties leans into what the identity of the build is the most, so if that's what you want to do, then I would recommend that. And finally, just to wrap up with a couple of basic thoughts about Icebreaker, I think overall the gun's not actually that strong. This is obviously a really fun build and a really creative way to use it, and I am having a ton of fun using it, but realistically, if I actually want to get something done, I don't really think Icebreaker is going to be in my inventory too often. But yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think Icebreaker is a great addition to the game? Do you like this build? Do you want to see more like it? I actually get a notification on my phone every time somebody sends me a comment, so I do read every single one. But that's enough e-begging for me, and that's about all I got. So, bye bye